All right, greetings and welcome everyone. Thank you so much, Zaki, for taking us live. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is Tark, and I'm with uh, Sommelier and I'm hosting today uh, the Graph and Sommelier Live Ask Us Anything on the Graph and R&D on the Graph. Uh, so we are with me here. I'm, I'm going to be your moderator for today. So thank you for allowing me the chance to serve you. And with me here today is uh, Zaki Mannion, I'm going to have to introduce, and also Yaniv. And I'm a co-founder of the Graph and Zaki Mannion co-founder of Sommelier. Uh, my job will be to make sure that we have an interesting and wide range of discussions. Uh, and you get to really learn all about the exciting things that are coming from the Graph as well as Sommelier. And we want you to ask us any questions. We're posting this on Twitter Live. So if you are in the Twitter stream, uh, get on Periscope, get on Twitter Live, give us your questions. Uh, we would like to hear from the community. At the end, we will uh, you know, wrap this up, but this will be also recorded and shared to the Graph community as well as the community, uh, Sommelier community as well. All right, welcome, gents. That's my introduction. Zucky, welcome. Yeah. Introduce yourself. Take it away. Hey, uh, I'm Zucky Munyan, uh, uh, working on Sommelier protocol, uh, trying to make life easier for Uniswap v3 LPs. Uh, you know, uh, it's been an exciting day to be a Uniswap uh, V3 LP, we get to see how the, the new protocol performs in, in these sort of wild uh, price swings. It's pretty exciting. Excellent. And you worked in the Cosmos, I believe? I, I, I did the work Cosmos. on the Cosmos. I'm wearing a Cosmos t-shirt. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, the good, the classic 2017 DevCon uh, t-shirt. Uh, and yeah. uh, the uh, feeling those 2017 vibes today. Uh, and uh, yeah. Uh, we are we are using a Cosmos chain in Sommelier uh, and the Gravity Bridge to bring the uh, uh, to bring the hotness to Uniswap uh, LP uh, automation. Excellent, excellent. And Yaniv, welcome aboard. Greetings. Yeah, good, good to hang out with you guys. So um, Zucky was uh, actually one of the uh, very first advisors that we brought on when we were starting the graph back in uh, twenty eighteen. Nice. Uh, on Tendermint Cosmos at the time, and has been a pretty prolific, you know, dev, architect, shit poster. Uh, <laughs> it's the shit posting that you're remembered for. <laughs> exactly. that's, that's the legacy you leave behind. Uh, but uh, yeah, um, I'm a co founder at The Graph, I'm now a managing partner at Edge and Node. Um, it's the initial team that built The Graph. Um, you know, The Graph is an indexing and query protocol. Uh, it's powering a lot of the uh, top applications in the Ethereum ecosystem, and uh, we're working on you know building the uh, you know core foundations for Web three, right? A new uh, you know decentralized internet and uh, you know system of human coordination where all information is verifiable uh, and not owned and controlled by you know small number of uh, corporations. So yeah. um, you know we're a good portion of the way there, but a uh, long way to go. And, and a quick question for you, Anive. When you found, when you co-founded the graph, did you ever envision that you know the graph would become the standard for DeFi? You know, such essentially the de facto standard for DeFi querying and access to to insights in on the Ethereum blockchain. Was it ever occurred to you that this would be you guys at the backstop? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, you know the plan was always to index everything and to uh, you know kind of power the entire you know new web. And so I guess uh, even now we're just a portion of the way there, but right. uh, but, it, but it's definitely uh, you know crazy to see it happening, right? Even if yeah. like you have these ambitions, right? It's like you know I feel like every startup, every you know project that people start, you probably start with some like large ambitions, but then when you actually see it happening, it's like oh wow. <laughs> yep. 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 Yeah, no, and, and, and amazing, and congrats, and and of course, Sumilier has been a recipient of. Uh, a recently a one million dollar grant from the graph uh and so we are very grateful to the entire community of the graph for supporting um you know the similia desire to help progress and move the r d uh efforts forward so i'm going to talk a little bit about the graph and the similia grant and ask some questions um you know zucky starting with you you know why you know what brought similia to the graph community and the graph ecosystem? What happened that, you know, this grant uh, suddenly became uh, an ending uh, in the beginning of a journey? So 
I think we've seen like a, a, a so okay, so what brought us what brought us to the uh, to the uh, the graph is the realization or like so I guess what what are we trying to do what we're trying to do is at Sommelier is build a protocol that lets a validator set uh, sort of uh, uh, act on behalf of users to help them automate their liquidity positions. Um, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to build infrastructure um, for uh, for sort of essentially like sort of democratized prime brokerage functionality. Like how do you, you uh, as an LP uh, uh, make sure that your liquidity is being optimized? How do you amortize gas costs? All of these things. And what we want to do is we want to put a validator set to work for you. Um, and the the uh, uh, the validator set and the and the protocols and the smart contracts that update the 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 liquidity positions are one half of the picture. Um, but there's the input to the picture, and the input to the picture is what are prices doing? What is the current state of the system? You know, what is the is the current and past price um, of the thirty thousand plus assets that are traded on dexes today? Um, and, uh, and the thirty plus thirty thousand plus pairs that are traded on Texas today, and ultimately, like, where do you find that information, and how do you make that available uh, 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 to the validator set? Um, and what I think was so far thinking of the graph um, was we're already seeing, like, you know, sort of, you know, it used to be that no running nodes was hard, so people ran uh, uh, outsourced that to Infura. Um, running nodes has gotten easier, and so people do. Uh, 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 People run a lot more of their own nodes. Uh, now the next generation is uh, data and getting data and getting analytics out of a out of a blockchain are hard. So you know there are all kinds of data vendors that are springing up. Um, but the graph was so far ahead of the curve that they were building a decentralized protocol for this. Um, and I think you know the ability of that decentralized protocol to interoperate with our validator network um, and the alignment between our group of our, our having our desire to have an open system and the graph as an open system um, was a very natural alignment uh, to, to, to figure out how this is all going to work. Awesome. Awesome. And and I think, um, you know, what what was the step when you said, hey, you know, Samilia, we need to partner with the graph because, you know, this vision needs to to, to happen. What what was the the catalyst that that brought the Samilia team to the graph quickly and said, listen, let's let's connect on R&D. Uh, I mean, the challenge was re-indexing and building indexes on Uniswap v2 data. Um, uh, I think the, uh, the what we have, I think Uniswap v2 uh, and the explosion of Uniswap and having smart contracts that are being interacted with essentially every block on Ethereum, fat, you know, Uniswap, that same code base showing up on, on all these other blockchains like Binance Smart Chain and Matic, uh, Polygon. Um, have like really sort of uh, became the uh, uh, the next stage in the evolution of the graph um, to handle that, and we wanted to be part of it. Got it. And and you need you know uh, you know the graph has suddenly gone multi-chain. You know, like Zucky said, Binance Smart Chain, Polygon, Matic. I mean, you know, how, what what do you guys you know seeing? What does the graph community see as the catalyst for change as well? And and how does that impact your view of R and D? When the graph thinks about what's next or what's coming, yeah, the, the, there's a lot of growth, you know, throughout the whole ecosystem. I mean, Ethereum itself, uh, of course, uh, continues to grow, but um, you know, as gas prices increase, we're seeing a lot of activity on um, EBM compatible chains. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're we are seeing that the chains that continue to support the EBM and Solidity uh, are doing really well because you know developers love to build it with Solidity. Um, there's like security auditors that know how to audit those contracts. And so those chains definitely kind of have uh, an advantage right now. Um, and, and people are kind of flocking to low gas um, kind of environments for certain types of applications. Um, but uh, yeah, just kind of, you know, getting back to, um, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the, the insight that, that the graph had, um, you know, I guess a few years ago that now is, is kind of, uh, you know, proving itself a, a little bit is this idea of aligning behind like subgraphs as this core abstraction for data. Um, and, um, you know, I think uh, it, it wasn't quite appreciated at the time, 
um, like uh, Zucky was saying, but uh, you know, it's one thing to run full nodes and to um, you know have access to like raw kind of blockchain data, but you know, applications need to like process that data before it's really usable. And I think um, people didn't quite realize how much code is actually required to do that ETL and, and to kind of like organize the data in a consumable format. And, um, you know, in, until the graph came along, all of that was done through just like custom code, right? And, and the problem with custom code is basically you're on the hook for running the servers for that custom code, um, which means you need a full DevOps team, you need to like, you know, people need to depend on you, whether, whether it's your own application or whether you're providing a service and that creates like vendor lock-in and all of these things that are kind of like against, you know, what we're trying to build in the space. And so um, we, we took a lot of time defining this kind of core subgraph abstraction that would allow you to do all of this custom, you know, um, processing of data um, and then um, serve it in a um, deterministic way uh, but to build that in a way that could actually run on a decentralized network. And I think that that is really key to, um, you know, building out both DeFi and Web3 so that we can um, build kind of like higher and higher levels of uh, data processing and make all of that data verifiable, which really is the core difference between Web2 and Web3, right? In Web2, we were fine basically completely trusting the server Right, in a client server model, whoever runs the server has complete control. In Web3, we want to have verifiable information where everything that you get, you can see exactly you know, how it got to that state. Um, right? Why is this the data that's being returned to me? Is it correct? Being able to verify it. And, uh, and with custom code, you can't do that. And so with subgraphs, you can. Um, so, so that's really been... Um, you know, our, our focus over the last few years is kind of building out this core subgraph abstraction, um, getting traction with developers. We've seen a lot of growth in areas like DeFi, NFTs, governance, you know, across the entire Ethereum space. Uh, we hit a bunch of scaling challenges just, um, you know, with the growth, uh, you know, of, of John Ethereum last year, um, which yeah. on posted service, we were able to kind of meet that demand. Uh, but, um, you know, there's, there are a bunch of things on our R&D side that we're still kind of working on right now to um, really uh, make all of this existing data on Web3 and DeFi easily consumable. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, that's coming from, you know, having third party developers build a bunch of subgraphs, right? We want every single protocol. And already now we have like really great coverage. You know, most of the top projects in the space are already building subgraphs, but uh, but there's so much more data that can be organized with subgraphs, and we want to give developers, you know, uh, even more powerful, you know, features in their subgraphs uh, to be yeah. able to do like deeper analytics style queries, um, and uh, um, you know, uh, uh, subgraph composition is another big thing to like link more and more data together. So we want to just make all of this data as easy uh, to to access as possible, but in a verifiable way. Got it. That's awesome. Uh, so, you know, my question, you know, now focusing now on the on the graph vision for DeFi. Um, today's been today's a little bit of a bloody day in uh, in crypto. Nothing we've not seen before. Like Zucky said, 2017. Question for you: um, Is DeFi, you know, <laughs> given where we are today, still going to be a leading driver for demand from the graph uh, for R and D and continuing innovations using the graph? in this new multi-chain world? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I think we're, we're still in the very early days of DeFi, right? I think, uh, mm -hmm. you know, what percentage of Americans, uh, you know, still have most of their net worth in, you know, banks, uh, savings accounts, uh, you know, traditional, you know, equities and instruments. I mean, it's the vast majority, right? So, um, so, so that's that's the market for DeFi. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of all finance, all, you know, where, 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 the, where the assets are sitting, um, mm -hmm. you know, how how people uh, you know move freely um, between assets, and so I think DeFi is going to continue to be a, a giant growth area. Um, we are also kind of focused on Web three and how Web three and DeFi really um, work hand in hand together, because ultimately, mm -hmm. you know, I you know DeFi is finance, right? And what is finance? It's it's the ability to unlock you know um, productive uh, potential in a sense. 
right, um, is one way of thinking about it and making, you know, uh, distribution of resources and allocation of resources more efficient. Uh, but of course, you know, the whole point of resources is to be spent doing productive work. And I think, um, you know, the, the future of work is all going to be moving on to Web3. And so, um, you know, for us, we see these things hand in hand that uh, we bring more and more, um, you know, economic activity. We bring more and more just human activity onto Web3. And all of that is going to want to be financed. All of that is going to want to, you know, use money and, and um, to transfer value. And so I think, um, you know, a lot of as, as we grow, since we're still so early in Web3, that is in turn going to produce a lot of demand for DeFi. And, uh, and all of that is, is going to require a lot of, um, you know, data processing, indexing, and, and, uh, and querying. Excellent. Um, question for you, Zaki. You know, when, when the Graph uh, and Sommelier announced the $1 million grant, we had, you know, some folks come in from the Graph saying, how can the community participate in this R&D effort? Um, you know, without having to get into the weeds on, you know, indexing, you know, technology R&D, um, how can the community participate, you know, in this in this familiar approach to, uh, you know, driving and pushing the graph forward with uh, this new R&D initiative? As we started to identify these bottlenecks, um, one of our biggest questions, um, and I'll have a forum post up on this later this week, um, is one of our biggest questions is, is basically like, what should the graph as a software development environment um, sort of present to users as a way of increasing performance, right? Um, there's, I think that there's a, there is a, there's a big, uh, like one of the big leap forwards is as more and more people are writing these graphs, um, you know, where do we provide advice mechanisms uh, 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 that like sort of help people optimize the performance of their subgraphs? Um, and I think this is part of the uh, part of the uh, goal. Like I think the first generate, like this current generation of subgraphs, um, the subgraph developers don't really know what the performance costs are um, of of their of their choices. And what we've mostly been seeing is sort of a very naive performance naive way of developing, which we didn't really learn about until like it didn't wasn't obvious to us like where the performance cost was until we started to investigate. And so it's obvious that, summer. that like why why the people who wrote the subgraphs also don't know why the performance cost was there. Got it. So do you think that uh, we can see a future where the graph on Binance Smart Chain is, you know, performant to something of, of you know the scale and volume of transactions they've seen on this chain uh, recently? As an Absolutely. example. Absolutely. Yeah. No, no doubt. Yeah. There 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 there, there are a ton of uh, you know low hanging fruit. Um, for, for performance. So I guess to, to give people a, a, a bit of context, um, you know, uh, usage of, you know, the graphs hosted service has been like, you know, fairly exponential. And, um, you know, uh, it, you know, the, the, the growth has just grown so fast that it's, it's constantly like pulling us to, uh, to, to, to just kind of like keep up with it. So, um, you know, we, we scaled our hosted service, you know, last year when, when we started having like that first set of issues during DeFi summer of like, you know, just yeah. going through the roof. Um, yeah. you know, we, we, we've had to like enable developers um, to, uh, to, you know, with more and more features to build like, you know, advanced subgraphs. Um, and, uh, and, and, and a lot of, you know, that work has really kind of paid off. But, you know, even going so, you know, it's, you know, just back like six to nine months, I think people were still, um, you know, uh, unsure of, of why there was like a whole team in a sense, like working on the graph. Um, and, uh, you know, Ethereum last year, you know, uh, was nowhere near where it is today, right? And so in a sense, we were like over investing in this layer of the stack because we, you know, really believe that Ethereum was gonna, you know, be the, the future of, you know, finance and of the web. And, um, and so we, we've been like steadily like investing, um, uh, you know, kind of step by step into this layer of the stack. And now we're kind of getting to a point where, you know, um, you know, uh, it, you know, there's all of these subgraphs getting 
synced and index, and now basically indexing performance is becoming kind of the bottleneck for developers. So people that are building on the graph, they're feeling the pain of, um, you know, if they're building, you know, complex subgraphs, and now the Ethereum chain, you know, has, you know, years of history, um, you know, apps like Uniswap specifically um, have so many events, so many contract calls over the last like several years that when you're indexing, you have to process all of those events. And right now that's currently the bottleneck. And so, you know, we, you know with any kind of software, you know, you build up to a level and then you kind of like hit the limits and then you've got to like, you know, make some, some large optimizations and then you can like, you know, increase performance in order of magnitude. And so, you know, we hit one of those uh, limits with uh, with indexing performance. And now, you know, we're making a, a really big concerted effort to focus on indexing performance. And so um, that's one of the reasons that uh, the Graph Foundation made this large grant to Sommelier. And um, and and they're they're really a, a ton of low hanging fruit. And so, you know, up until this point, um, we've been focused on getting that core subgraph abstraction right to make it really easy for developers to build these subgraphs, um, to have a, a language and an environment that's really expressive, so you can um, you know build the type of subgraphs that you want. And in a sense, um, you know, performance was just something that was kind of put on the shelf to kind of deal with later. Now we're taking that time and we're investing heavily in uh, making these performance optimizations. And, um, uh, and there's uh, a lot that can be done here. So whether it's Ethereum mainnet, whether, whether it's these like super fast, you know, chains like Binance Smart Chain or, or Solana or uh, all of these types of things. Um, yeah. You know the 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 graph is uh, is going to be able to keep up in all of those environments. I think that's awesome. All right, I know we're nearly done on time, so we're going to take a quick two minutes for questions from the community. Uh, and now, just check in with Zucky. Do we have any questions uh, currently uh, in the? Probably the most the interesting list? question is this: is this question related to Definity? I don't know if you guys have been at all looking or thinking about Definity. Um, can you, you help us with a question? What was the question? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's up on the stream. How does it rule? Oh. How does the graph relate to Definity Rework Three? Definity okay. Rework Three. Yeah, uh, you know, I I don't want to have uh, you know too many thoughts on on Definity. You know, I guess uh, you know they 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 launched, uh, which is uh, pretty exciting. I guess it's been a long time in the making. Uh, it looks like they've got like a, a a shiny new code base that was written in Rust. Um, so very interested in kind of exploring and kind of you know seeing what they've done there you know i think that the the canister idea is fairly interesting um you know they use wasm right for uh for those canisters which uh you know the graph also uses wasm for uh subgraphs for that data processing um but uh i think there's a lot to be seen you know also uh you know what where developers feel comfortable building their decentralized applications um, so, you know, for me, uh, you know, I think uh, it'll just be interesting to see where the developers go. I think the other thing that I would just, again, point out is that, like, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of value to DeFi data. Um, is, is it's not just the volume, it's not just the performance uh, hits. You know, the reason why um, uh, Sommelier is, is, is interested in this is, is that data is valuable, but we want to, we don't want to concentrate that value. We, we, we want to democratize that value. Um, and that, that, that is, that's sort of the difference between, I think some of these uh, uh, is, you know, as the, you know, like, you know, having an index of, you know, every piece of artwork that exists as an NFT, its history as a collectible, et cetera, who were the past owners, whose story, like, it's going to be important. It's going to be part of, you know, how people build a, a, a web three experience um, on top of some of these new collectible consumer experiences that are taking off. But the value to a trader of, you know, uh, of, of understanding price history and, and liquidity and uh, what positions are open is just immeasurably greater. Um, and I think that just generates uh, a sort of natural area of focus. Um, uh, around who's who's going to want to invest in these systems. Got it. All right. Thank you. Okay. So, um, uh, Zaki, do you want to take one more question, or do you think that's it 
in terms of I, I don't see anything else that's like super uh, super okay. interesting. All right. And if folks want to continue the, you know, asking us questions, uh, you can join the Graph Discord or some of the Discord where uh, it is, there are super active communities that you can participate. So let's uh, wind down our last three minutes with final thoughts. All right, uh, Zaki, um, what's on the Sommelier roadmap for the Graph and the R&D grant? What's going to happen next? Um, so we've been doing an, a bunch of investigation in R and and research. Um, we have experimented with various. Uh, 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 you know, we've been treating the Uniswap v2 reindexing process um, as kind of the stress test of the entire system, and we've been trying to understand uh, what the performance bottlenecks are there. Uh, we are, we're going to we're going to write up our findings there and sh uh, and share them more widely with the community. Um, we have been we helped write the uh, Uniswap v3 uh, subgraph uh, and contribute that upstream uh, to. Uh, to the, to the Uniswap repos, and we are excited to we are we are running all of that and using all of that in uh, the Sommelier app as pairings and sellers uh, evolve. Awesome. All right, and Yaniv, what final words? What's next for the graph and the ecosystem? Um, yeah, there, there, there's a lot going on, but uh, you know, I think most relevant to uh, Sommelier and the, the work that we're doing together that we're we're really excited for. Is um, you know the graph uh, ecosystem has been investing a lot in decentralization, right? So there's a the grants program, uh, which uh, you know if you're a, a developer or a community member, or, you know there's any way that you want to uh, uh, contribute to the graph ecosystem, uh, you can apply for a grant, right? That's what uh, Sommelier did, and um, you know we've got town halls regularly and, and various like governance calls. And uh, one of the things that I'm really excited about is, um, you know, starting to do a lot more development in the open, right? Of course, a lot of, uh, you know, or basically all of our code is open source, you know, at, uh, you know, the, the graph protocol uh, GitHub. But up until now, um, you know, the Edge and Node team has done a lot of the core protocol development work like itself, you know, we're, we're a company, but, uh, but now with Sommelier and other teams, um, you know, a lot more of this work is gonna be done in public. Um, there's conversations uh, going on in the forum, and I think we'll be taking a lot of these sorts of discussions there. And so I think it's a really great opportunity for, for people that want to like learn um, more about the internals of how things are built and help contribute to this ecosystem uh, to, to help add uh, more and more contributors uh, to the core protocol. Awesome. All right. That is amazing. And I think uh, it's an exciting time to be part of the Graph community. So if you're watching this, please uh, join the Graph community engage, uh, participate, grants are available for you to come in and make a difference to decentralized data querying. Of course, we're Sommelier. Come check us out uh, at sommelier.finance. Uh, we are here to automate DeFi for the retail LPs who you know, need the access to prime brokerage infrastructure, such as the graph. Um, we're also in welcoming community members as well, sommelier.finance. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Neve. Thank you, Zucky. Thank you, the Graph team that helped us organize this event. Uh, rock stars them all. And we look forward to having more updates on the sommelier and the Graph R&D grant in the future. Thanks, everyone. Great to be with you. All right. Cheers. Bye.